our, our third speaker for today is a PhD in electrical engineering. His primary job is to manage all the hardware related projects at Mycelium, such as the Bitcoin card, Mycelium Entropy, and the Mycelium payment system. He's going to talk to us about the future of mobile Bitcoin wallets. So please help me welcome to the stage Mr. Alexander Vasilchenko. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, so I am a CTO at, of Mycelium. Uh, this is a company, we are based in Vienna, about six people there permanently. And we are about 12 people worldwide, so six more outside, I don't know, Denmark, uh, Russia, Cyprus, UK, US. And uh, I will talk about the future of mobile wallets. We are basically the developer of uh, one mobile wallet, so I will basically talk about vision, how we want to crystallize what, what, what products do we have how, and which direction we are going to move. So it is software product and also hardware. Personally, myself, I am more an electrical engineering guy, so I'm uh, more about the hardware design uh, background, and uh, we have like uh, lead developers for the Mycelium wallet, like Jan Muller and Andreas Peterson. They are lead developers of the Mycelium wallet, and I'm here at the very uh, bottom of the slide. And of course, the, uh, I make from the first slide the promo. Maybe it's Mycelium wallet because we think it's the best, because it realizes our vision on how the mobile wallets have to be and how to, uh, they have to develop. Um, OK, so first uh, statement, uh, or let's say, yeah, statement we do in our wallet that keep your private keys private. So we by no means want to store the keys or be a broker or uh, be a web wallet or whatever. So all your keys stored with you and it's your responsibility as a user to take care of you because your private key is your money. Uh, at, at, at least if you have, I don't know, uh, $20 bill, if you lose it, you lose your money and it's your responsibility. Uh, so 100% control over uh, keys is more or less the same what I already said. Then uh, about our wallet, so we have a, a client server architecture uh, and it's enabled to make our wallet very fast. So no matter what device you have, mobile device you have, no matter how strong is your Android phone, uh, we basically support starting from Android 2.2 up to the latest Android versions. Uh, all the hard work is slain on our back backends, on our servers, and we have uh, uh, very good optimized uh, database and let's say we are running the full nodes which connected to permanently to about 1,000 other nodes in the Bitcoin network. So, and this allows us to make, to analyze the transactions and for instance, uh, see whether the transaction uh, will, is not rejection, rejected, for instance, by, by the node. So basically make instant transaction confirmation. Of course, we are talking about probabilities all the time here. Yeah. Uh, then uh, our um, uh, also focus is always laying on the. Uh, so I will talk a little bit later about the paper wallet. And for instance, if you have a paper wallet, you can make uh, your cold storage spending. So that means that the private key will not be even stored in the wallet itself. So if you want to spend money. Uh, so you, for instance, select the destination address, the amount, and then the wallet reads your private key from the paper wallet. Uh, it signs the transaction by this key, keeping the private key in the RAM on the phone, not uh, writing it on flash, and sending the signed transaction, and as soon as the transaction is basically sent, uh, the key is uh, eradicated from RAM. So and it's never been on flash, so if you have a software in, in protected area, so if you, uh, if the, you have basically rooted phone and flash can be accessed by other apps, uh, it is still basically, it is much more difficult for uh, an attacker to steal your private key. So if you always make the cold storage spending. So it's again uh, uh, always in line with our, uh, one of the main, uh, 
line which we are talking that you always keep your private key by yourself and we want to really uh, even uh, defend ourselves or distance ourselves from having it in our software as much as possible so that it's your responsibility and you have to understand this concept very well. Uh, there are actually three kinds of Bitcoin users. Uh, it already comes with the experience of using the uh, Mycelium wallet uh, and uh, uh, providing uh, constant support for this. So those users which admit, who, uh, who admit losing coins, uh, there are those users who lie about it, and there are those users who make backups. So it's almost everyone who even experienced user has very, very like once in a while lost some bitcoins, some transactions went wrong, and of course uh, uh, it is a very big issue how to force people or basically how to teach your users to make backups. So the process has to be flawless. It's like you, you take a new device, yeah, you open the box. Who reads the user's manual? Basically, you start to press the buttons, etc. Who makes the backup? So now a lot of wallets uh, basically enforce that you cannot uh, uh, deposit funds into your wallet unless you made a backup. Yeah, and then. Uh, how to prevent that the backup or how to make sure that the backup you made there is no human error so that you did not make any mistake in uh, 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 writing your I don't know private key or password correctly so this is uh, from the support line comes a lot of requests for this and we have basically a lot of thoughts we put a lot of thoughts into this how to do so we have our uh, legacy backup so uh, the mycelium users uh, mycelium wallet users they uh, must know this picture very well so uh, uh, what what is going on here so we we uh, that's the first version so when we had still single address support so what you can do you can uh, uh, have your uh, so your wallet uh, so you, have, you create a keeper or imp, uh, import uh, a keeper, so private key and the Bitcoin address into your wallet. So you want to back it up. Uh, the feature you, we use for this, so we take your uh, private key uh, and make uh, like very complex encryption there. So we stretch the, uh, the key, we put some salt, etc., and the wallet gives you uh, this long 15 characters password to fill in. So it's not the password which you uh, imagine or whatever, so it's basically for you for, as a user not possible to reuse from your you know, Gmail account or whatever. And uh, there is a, a green, uh, the green square there, there's a little checksum. So and every t every time you make so and every address you can back up like this so you can have a list of these encrypted private keys and uh, a public uh, uh, public uh, address. Uh, so and this is a PDF file which you can send to your Gmail account by mail. So uh, or whatever uh, and you can store it like this. Uh, if you don't uh, have this 15-character uh, password, even if attacker steals this encrypted private key, so this is base 58 form of this, uh, it will require for him, I don't know, uh, maybe hundreds of years to decipher it, to crack this, to understand, uh, to basically retrieve money from this. So it's a very secure stuff. So we are not afraid to send it. So when you when you create this backup, it is PDF we immediately propose in the wallet to share by any means in Android possible. You know, send by uh, you know WeChat or you know Gmail or whatever. Yeah, and uh, for instance, if mycelium tomorrow does not exist, whatever it is, you know, uh, reason for this, uh, there is a one page. The last page is always explaining you how can you decipher and re retrieve using open source software and kind of available, say, off-the-shelf tools to retrieve your password. I mean, uh, to retrieve your private key from this password and encrypted uh, private key. So uh, that was covered, and it actually got very uh, a lot of very positive um, uh, feedback. So we went uh, a little bit further. So this is our. So we are on Google Play, and we are now working also to uh, have our uh, Mycelium wallet for iOS because 
now there are already eight. I think I pulled out about eight uh, and, uh, mycelium, wall um, mycelium wallets, uh, Bitcoin wallets on iOS. So we will be uh, ninth. So we are now currently almost finished the, the stage before the rollout. So the second pro uh, product, it's again software product which is inside the mycelium wallet. It's called a local trader. What does the local trader do? So you have your, uh, so when, uh, um, one of the most uh, frequent questions asked, uh, okay, I installed a wallet, a Bitcoin wallet, where do I get the Bitcoins? It's actually, okay, how do I keep it, what it is, and where do I get them? And to answer this question, this local trader was created. We didn't put a lot of marketing into this, but that's actually answering this question. So this local trader allows, for instance, me as already uh, an advanced Bitcoin user, so owner of some Bitcoin, said, okay, I want to sell Bitcoins for cash for whoever it is. I live in Vienna, so there is a map of Vienna. Sorry, Andreas, this is our developer, uh, put his screenshot. So basically, our office is somewhere here. He says, okay, I am Andreas. I sell Bitcoins for uh, Bitstamp price plus 5%. So, and it's calculated always automatically. Like at that moment, it was 334 euros per Bitcoin. Please come to this address or please chat me. So, so what you can do, you, uh, I, for instance, a new user, I installed the wallet. I say, okay, I want to buy Bitcoins in Vienna. I see a list of offers. For instance, I like the offer from Andreas. And I say, okay, hey, Andreas, I want to buy from you. And Andreas says, okay, I am selling from 20 to 200 euros worth of Bitcoins. And I can start and fully encrypted end-to-end -end chat with Andreas. So I can say, okay, Andreas, can I buy for 100 euros Bitcoins for you? He will say, sure. Can I buy tomorrow? He said, no, let's meet tonight at this place, etc." So this chat is encrypted. So we use also basically... Uh, we exchange uh, a s common secret with the bit. So basically, we use some Bitcoin uh, protocol principles to establish an encrypted channel. So all the messages coming because it's a client server architecture, all the messages are passing by our uh, backend, but we, it's gibberish for us. So basically, it's all encrypted by a privately shared key, which is stored only on the client side. Uh, so basically, if we are again hacked or uh, if we are asked, let's say, to show all the logs. We're actually not afraid to show because it is, uh, it is not uh, uh, making any sense to whoever looks at this. So, and you can meet this person in private and basically exchange the, uh, make an exchange. So what is going on further, you, 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 you uh, have some deal, you accept offer, etc. So we control, so it's, when I meet a person, uh, give Andreas 100 euros, he, uh, presses a button that, okay, I, am, uh, I received 100 euros, and immediately the recipient of Bitcoins receives his bit Bitcoins. And for instance, we have this transaction, uh, uh, transaction control. So basically, it's transaction confidence bar. Uh, it is like an all window system. It comes to 99% and then is stuck there because we don't give guarantee. Uh, so it's common uh, progress bar problem. I mean, I, it's never been solved, by the way. It's actually, it's never homogeneous how it moves. So uh, what, what, what is the problem there? So again, we are connected to 1,000 nodes, and we see that the Bitcoins which are receiving from Andreas basically are being accepted by all the nodes to be included into the blocks. And it actually says us, okay, that these Bitcoins are not false. I talked to uh, several Bitcoin payment providers, and uh, so far, uh, like BitPay said, I don't know, uh, something like a year ago that they haven't had a double spend attack, let's say. So basically they, for bigger amount, so that they are quite confident to release money based on this information. So we give 99%. So if you see the bar already 90%, that's for sure. That's at instance, you don't have to wait for 10 minutes, 15 minutes when it is included in the block, then basically already. Uh, uh, recorded in the uh, blockchain. So it's actually, it gives you some convenience. So you met Andreas, exchange, and left. So fast, completely decentralized uh, approach here. So one of the next movement would be to put there some stationary points. When I arrive to Tokyo, and I want to have some, uh, I have always liked this example, and I want to, uh, uh, cash out my bitcoins for uh, a Japanese yen. I'm actually not sure whether this person speaks well. I 
don't really want to come across the whole city on a specific time, meet this specific person. They all look the same for me. It's really a very big human error. So I would actually come to a ATM machine or a specific address. It always waits for me. I don't have to align this. I mean, I can still have a coffee or be in a rush or whatever and uh, meet this ATM machine with my mycelium wallet, feed it with the nodes, and that's already put up the code which I received, let's say, via this encrypted chat, put up the code on the machine, basically to prove that I am standing in front of this ATM machine, and the bitcoins will be deposited uh, to my uh, uh, mycelium wallet. So basically, when you create a local trader account, one of your mycelium wallet addresses you uh, bind to the uh, 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 to the local trader accounts. And of course there are ratings, so if I want to, there are professional traders which actually do this physical exchange, over the counter exchange now in Austria, etc. And you can actually, uh, it's automatically the amount of your successful trades contributes to your uh, reputation. So, and I see for instance, maybe Andreas proposes a good price, but his reputation is low. Maybe I don't want to meet this person. Maybe I meet somebody who has a five star reputation. We have a funny movie about this, but I'll show you another movie. Uh, somewhere in the middle so that we a little bit relax. Yeah, so, and uh, you can see the map. Uh, it's on our website. Uh, you, you can see the map uh, of all the people which trade uh, Bitcoin, sell, etc. So these are clusters. You see the concentration, of course, is quite geographically representing the Bitcoin map. Uh, I, this morning, I added here uh, some Bulgarian um, situation. So we have actually one person which wants to buy Bitcoin in Plovdiv, if I read it correctly, and one person which wants to sell Bitcoins. So, and yeah, uh, basically the situation. So it's, of course, ideal world has to create much more uh, this green and uh, yellow Bitcoin marks on the map. So that's what we have in Bulgaria, not very much spread. In Austria, it's actually, uh, every one of us has a like, constantly running local trader, but we are like a, a constant permanent tester of our own software. So we actually also uh, Bitcoin traders there. Uh, okay. And it's again, you can find in the same Mycelium wallet. Uh, so here is the link for Google Play, and or you can actually download even the APK from the website. So we also have uh, multi-language support. Uh, we ex recently now very aggressively targeting a, a Chinese market. We are in 15 uh, app stores in China because they are not like Google, uh, Google App Store. So we have a person which basically constantly support our mycelium wallet for China because as it was, China was responsible for the last Bitcoin bubble in the price, so let's say when it spiked to 1,000, almost 200 USD per Bitcoin. Uh, we see a lot of potential here and uh, a lot of, I mean, majority of Chinese don't speak English. So for them, just straight uh, Chinese version is, is very convenient. Uh, our recent release, we, our major release was version 2.0. Uh, we introduced HD wallets, uh, providing you a little bit more privacy. So we don't reuse the same address. Uh, the HD addresses concept is that, so single address is like this. So I have this address, I received five, Euro, five bitcoins, let's say, from somebody, and then I sent uh, one bitcoin to another person, a third uh, one bitcoin to uh, another person. So, and I always use the same address. So basically, you can track me on blockchain with HD wallet. Uh, every time, every transactions for receiving and sending money, you have a completely uh, different address in the blockchain. So it provides you more anonymity. Let's say at instance that your addresses and your funds are not directly traceable on the black chain, blockchain. And that's a very nice feature. And in our wallet, you can use the legacy single addresses for advanced users, having this backup, which already I showed you, or you can use this HD wallet. So basically, by default, it proposes you immediately use the HD wallet uh, uh, account, which creates always uh, new uh, Bitcoin addresses. 
for the future, we even want to bring privacy to another level, so we want to implement this coin join feature when all the transactions, basically traditionally how it's going on, so you have one address and from address, from this address basically you chip in uh, amounts you want and basically it's all traceable. Even if it's HD, there are very difficult techniques, but you might basically trace it. Uh, in the coin join, you basically, it's kind of a mixer on the go. Uh, so you create sort of uh, one pool where all the uh, transactions, let's say, from let's say our wallet, I don't know, 50K plus users, uh, send their transactions and their outputs are, uh, signed outputs are mixed and then the, uh, these outputs, irrelevant, for instance, if I send it from my uh, outputs, for instance, can be sent to somebody uh, else uh, recipient and mine and somebody else will be sent to my recipient. So basically it's kind of mixer on the go and that's we will implement one of the future releases. Another outlook we already experimented a little bit, connecting, uh, so one of the uh, problems of uh, servers constantly connected to internet is basically that you can DDoS them. So you can basically hack the, uh, the, the DDoS our server and uh, then our clients, uh, let's say, will be denied in the servers from our clients. So that's uh, one side, this centralized approach which we have allows to have very light and very fast, uh, very fast uh, Bitcoin wallet. From another side, it really has um, a point of attack which we have to, which we want to avoid. And we want to use Tor at each of the uh, uh, site, let's say, of the server connected to uh, the clients, to basically uh, the app, and also to the Bitcoin networks. So basically, through the Tor, we hide the uh, hide where our servers are, basically the server's uh, addresses. It adds a little bit the latency. So up to maybe two seconds is added then on each end. It can be up to two seconds added. So basically you have to expect that it will be a little bit slower version, but, uh, uh, and you can opt for this. Let's say you want to use store or you don't want to use store. Uh, basically it's to ensure again your privacy more or less. Uh, another future big project we're going to implement, big uh, uh, update we want to do, it's uh, implementation of multi-sig transactions. Multi-sig transactions actually is a huge uh, field uh, for monetization, for instance, I don't know, keeping collaterals, uh, uh, implementation kind of some parts of implementation of a payment protocol. Uh, so two-factor uh, authentications and uh, all these use cases, let's say, uh, of instant deposits money or instant withdrawal money from the from the exchanges uh, or you know and other parties but that's yeah that's what we are looking into this but multi signature transactions we already basically uh, starting with this uh, that will be one of the major release but it will take several months i guess before we are sure to uh, release it completely uh, and of course, we constantly worked on the authentication and encryption, so uh, never storing uh, passwords uh, on the server side. And uh, um, like, like in this backup uh, solution, we are basically proposing you always to write down the password and we create it so that you don't uh, remember this and it's not like a you know, brain wallet uh, implementation. Now, uh, now we come more to uh, the question. Uh, there was a problem. There was a problem. How we create um, mm, uh, uh, an address? So, is the environment of your Android phone secure enough to create a Bitcoin address? Is are the scripts provided in internet or any program on your computer, which is by default already can be or compromised uh, environment? Does it create? Uh, secure in a secure way your uh, private key? The answer is uh, no. I mean, we again speak about probabilities, but the solution here be this mycelium entropy device. So I have this device with me, so we are now already finalizing the production, so we soon will receive it and we'll start testing, and uh, so I have this uh, prototype. So it's little USB device, it looks a little bit different, so it's a metal casing, 
Uh, so and how it works, you just plug it in into computer, uh, into the printer, USB port, and the uh, printer, many printers have this USB port, actually recognizes this as a USB stick with a JPEG file with the photo appearing there. So the entropy, mycelium entropy device basically creates some random numbers, so this kind of uh, physics behind that, uh, and uh, creates the private key and uh, a Bitcoin address re related, and you can print it. When you plug out your stick, this is basically come out of the uh, memory completely. So if you plug ne next time, it's actually create another uh, address pair. So very simple. So what you can do, you can take uh, your public uh, address, stick it on your fridge, stick it on your fridge, and of course ke keep your private keys private and uh, it means that it never been in any operation system whatsoever. So very easy, simple way. So this is how this, for, for instance, will look the printout. So private key on the right and the Bitcoin address on the left. And what what to do if somebody can steal this private key? So we have this uh, feature which is called Shamir secret sharing. So you can share the secret. So you can basically push the button, and your mycelium entropy will create uh, the same Bitcoin address on the left. But to move money from this Bitcoin address, you need actually to scan three different uh, private keys. So the private keys is split into three different private keys. You put it into three different blockers, making for the attack or given, let's say, for three different people, I don't know, in the company, so that they all consent before pushing money, let's say, for I mean, whatever reason. So, and it's much more difficult. In our further implementation, we can have a setup that is, for instance, 10 addresses and eight can push out of 10 or whatever. So it's all reconfigurable. This is very simple and very, very uh, convenient and very secure version to store your Bitcoins, especially big amounts. Here is a little... Uh, movie about this. So, so here we put a lot of thoughts how to make it very simple to explain the concept of a private key and a public address, and what is Samir secret sharing, and what is actually mycelium entropy about. Yeah, and then yeah, a nice thing about the mycelium entropy it's a completely open source project from uh, from the source code which is already published on the GitHub. Uh, then uh, the schematics will be published as soon as the mycelium entropy is getting into the hands of everyone. Uh, all the components used are off the shelf, so you can buy mycelium entropy from us for 40 bucks now, I think, where we use. Uh, or you can buy, for instance, off the shelf uh, evaluation kit for $150 from you know CPU producer, take the source code, build a binary, program your uh, 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 evaluation kit, and actually you will receive the same mycelium entropy. So if you don't trust 
please, we actually open and people already from Bitcoin Foundation look into this. So we, and of course, uh, even the way Mycelium Entropy, the physics, how it is creating, uh, getting the private key uh, based on which random number, how this random number created in this USB stick when it's plugged in and powered. Uh, there is a scientific paper we were putting this Mycelium Entropy into the fridge or heating up, seeing how these random numbers, they might change, etc. So at least to our knowledge, there is really a very big margin, very big margin, and to knowledge of these guys, that the random number is really random enough to create a really not repeatable Bitcoin address. Then we have uh, uh, another let's say, era started in the uh, private uh, uh, Bitcoin addresses and Bitcoin addresses as a use hardware. So uh, one of the next talks will be about Trezor. And uh, so what is going on is that we maybe want to move from uh, uh, universal devices to a specific dedicated hardware uh, devices which are much more secure to store your key. So there are no operation system, no place for viruses. Uh, it's closed source or open source, but uh, it is has trusted display, trusted keyboards. It's, you cannot put sniffers like you can do it on Android devices. And for instance, we can um, have different scenarios implementing uh, let's say Trezor use cases we can say with, for instance, Mycelium wallet. So we can have a Trezor account. So basically, it's account created by the Trezor. So uh, keeper created by tre Trezor, for instance, uh, only the public address, and we can receive money on the Trezor uh, on the uh, address created by the Trezor. Or, for instance, we can have uh, spending. So basically, our Mycelium wallet acts as a communication gateway, and the Trezor does all the job and keeps the private key always on the Trezor. So we, Mycelium wallet never sees it at all. Yeah? Uh, or we can have a full Trezor support receiving, sending, with Trezor signing using the private key there. Uh, next step we move is the Bitcoin card. I have uh, only five minutes left. So it's basically my child. This is a project of these cards. Uh, this is uh, maybe the most nice looking card. It's the most geeky, so it's m the most scary one. You know, we see all the guts inside. Uh, so what we've done, we essentially put a Trezor uh, like a signing device in the credit card form factor. So it's really compatible credit card form factor, uh, which can uh, receive, send Bitcoins, create Bitcoin address, sign Bitcoin address, the all Bitcoin math is there, plus the UI, so the display and the keyboard. Uh, and it can be put into every ATM machine, every post terminal. It is very small, so we actually, a lot of uh, uh, efforts have gone to press all this electronics into this form factor. So many in the world, many companies basically refused as they were not believing that you can actually press everything into this form factor. So it's actually very big way we have gone through this. Uh, yeah, f and this card also has a radio. So for instance, if I would have a, a restaurant or whatever and I want to pay with the Bitcoin card, I can actually pay my bills uh, just not uh, you know, asking for a waiter. So I receive my invoice. If I see that it's my invoice, I type the PIN and the money are sent. So there are different ways of the infrastructure. Or for instance, what we have here, we have this kind of uh, readers, and here we have a Trezor use case. So I have this uh, small uh, smart card reader, so I put my card here. I have my phone. I plug in, uh, I plug, yeah, that's my son's photo here. I plug, uh, plug in this device, and basically all the transactions, what I talked about, the Trezor, so you can see on the screen, for instance, I don't know, first uh, uh, digits of the address or last digits of the address, you see the amount to whom you sent, you confirm it on the keyboard on the, on the card, and again, the Mycelium wallet acts as a, only as a communication gateway here. So that's basically, and like this, it is fully compatible with one of the Sp most private infrastructure units, your wallet. So you can put it on your wallet. It's actually also a piece of infrastructure. So we want to have this mycelium card uh, basically to be in the hand of every user in every wallet. And in long-term perspective, we think that once maybe in, uh, Visa or MasterCards comes to us and asks to put their logo on this, on this very device. Yeah. <laughs> yes, so basically that was it for my talk. Thank you very much for your attention.